good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you for uh, coming to our wmg group colloquium today uh, it's my pleasure to invite uh, dr chinnapath panviswas from uh, uh, materials uh, engineering department at uh, queen mary university london he just joined uh, queen mary university from university of leicester in uh, july 2022 chinnapath uh, completed his uh, phd uh, in metallurgical and materials engineering department from university of birmingham in 2013 and he completed his bachelor's in uh, physics from uh, chulalong khan university thailand in 2008 um, after confinement of his phd he has joined partnership for uh, research in simulation of manufacturing and materials prism to research group in rolls royce university technology center at university of birmingham from 2013 to 2018 in june 2018 he was awarded epsrc ukra innovation fellowship to conduct his project as principal investigator on additive manufacturability of metallic alloys where he was senior fellow and epsrc innovation fellow at university of oxford before joining uh, queen mary university of london he was associate professor in digital manufacturing as well as associate director of nisco uk research uk re innovation fellow at school of engineering university of leicester over the past 14 years he has developed predictive capability of additive manufacturing processes investment casting laser and electron beam fusion welding of additive manufacturing So today, um, Chennapath is going to give a talk on thermal chemical fluid dynamics of multi-metal additive manufacturing, in situ alloying, composition control, and species mixing. Thank you, Chennapath, for your uh, uh, time and giving this uh, talk to our group. And I welcome you to present your talk now. Thank you very much, Parkas, for your excellent uh, introduction. I'm very honored to. We invited to to present to I mean everyone in the metallurgical uh, community today, and today I will talk about additive manufacturing or on three D printing, especially some some aspect or some research project in in situ alloying. So first of all, I would like to acknowledge that the funding body from EPSRC and Royal Academy of Engineering, which actually are uh, supporting some research activity in the past years. For for I mean, including the result from this presentation. So as 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 you may know, um, nowadays people talking about metal three D printing or metal additive manufacturing, or I would call it AM. And the, the the most one of the most popular techniques they call powder based fusion, where you have the powder actually a spread on onto the substrate, and then you use a laser to fuse them together, and then. Uh, uh, construct it in in a, a specific 3D geometry. They that there, there is some many so many things happen during this this kind of manufacturing process where you you need to control and understand what what happened in such a very small uh, time and length scale. As as you see from from this scheme, the laser beam size is can be 100 micron in size in diameter, and then you 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 fuse it in in such a very short period of time. It leads to very extreme, uh, how to say, physics or 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 cooling that 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 make the microstructure and then the property quite different from that traditional made uh, alloys or or materials. So the the talk today will focus on how can we see or how can we understand the uh, uh, how to say interaction of laser and the matter to 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 basically improve the the process for further. Uh, developed the uh, multi materials additive manufacturing, and this is this is something I will focus for for today. And as as you see from the beginning to 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 the to to the end, I mean from start from, from the powder and the laser until you get the the component level here. There's so many things involved in, in the process. Oh, sorry. Um, which include a uh, physics of the laser interaction with the materials. The chemistry where you want to control uh, whether or not you you will get the, the same chemistry that 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 you you use as a powder, 
So there's some, for example, some vaporization may happen and then you get some chemistry, which is not exactly the same that you want initially. And then material design, the process is in order to actually get the right uh, condition for uh, printed uh, the, the part successfully. Part of metallurgy to, to basically get the good quality of powder in order for you to, to get the quite good quality of the part. And this one is just a fundamental understanding that we need to put together in order to generate some kind of a, a new approach to accelerate the, the, the technology using computational you know, uh, research, which is uh, da big data artificial intelligence, and which I will give you a little bit of, uh, how to say, progress that, that we have been doing in this field. So if I give you a little bit of background about the metallurgy in, in the specific field of the uh, super alloy, if, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that some of you may get familiar with super alloy. That in the tra traditionally, we, we, we use a cast or, or road uh, uh, process to, to basically process this super alloy back in 1940s. But every time we introduce a new process like part of metallurgy or directional certification or single crystal casting even, we will introduce usually a uh, new composition for that. So that is because we, they, they, the reason is because we optimize the material or as a function of process that, that you use. It's probably the same for, for AM, that's because of challenge at the moment, the state of the art super alloy are generally difficult to print. So many defect can, can happen. So how can we go about it? There are two aspects. The first aspect is the materials. Second is the process. In terms of materials, so we can use a kind of alloy design uh, computational approach to basically find a way to, to see what is the available composition. I mean, based on benchmark with um, a traditional nickel based super alloy. In this a particular paper, we're looking at around a 10 million uh, composition. And then we, we compare or benchmark with traditional alloy and come up with uh, a new uh, processing and also metallurgical window that we hope we can print it better based upon the physics-based model, uh, merit indices for strength, key free, uh, property and density. And for the process uh, parameter, we're looking at fixing range and strain rate cracking. And this is a first step we can say that, okay, we, we want to actually find a new composition benchmark with the, the traditional available uh, material that, that we want the property to match with. And then we, 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 we prove it that with the new super alloy, we can actually print it better. So it's actually uh, defect free, for example, for, uh, for a given condition that's actually published in, in, in ACTA 2021. And in addition to that, in addition to the composition itself, we need to think about as well about the process because at the moment it's not just uh, fabricating something simple because add additive manufacturing give you more flexibility to fabricate. For example, you can do laser-based multiple metallic material additive manufacturing. But if, if you see in the middle of the screen here, the Eiffel Tower, from, from, the, top, from the bottom you see copper and the, and the steel on the top. So there's a completely great uh, printing along along the, the height of this Eiffel Tower. This means that this gives us more flexibility to, to fabricate something which we can't do before. So the, the, the gradient of this is actually has to be controlled in order for us to actually get the, the, the property, which may be the, the new property that may, may, may not seen before. So in, in summary, in this diagram here, normally if you directly join between bulk material A and B is kind of welding. And the gradient path method here is, is a way that you, you can do using only additive manufacturing. And this is, for example, that people try to see, try to fabricate stainless steel 304L with the Inconel 625, for example. This can be used for, example, repair application. But in order to actually get this technology successfully uh, implemented in, in the real uh, manufacturing uh, industry, we need to understand a little bit more. So if I try to summarize the challenge in the, the, the process design, uh, given that we be looking at a, a three a particular method for 3D printing, 
which are uh, uh, direct laser deposition while uh, additive manufacturing. You, so the, 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 the thing in common that you, you will see here is the interaction of the laser and the material, which is very, how to say, extreme at, at, the, at, at the very short length and time scale. How can we go about it? How can we understand this in order to control uh, subsequent microstructure and the uh, property scatter in, 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 in the part? So if, if you um, look at uh, some of my paper in the past in 2015, we are looking at the something called now part of best fusion additive manufacturing or previously called selective laser melting that uh, if you vary just some process parameter, you can get totally different uh, property in terms of subsurface porosity, for example, here. And that, that is so important if you want to bring a safety critical component like a turbine. So now we will go, go inside in, into the mail pool, into the, the, the printing uh, technique or, or, or printing uh, science that, or metal physics behind that. So if we zoom in further, to, to see what happened during the interaction of laser and, and, and the, uh, the powder particle here. You will see there's a lot of things going on. It's not as simple as, as you see in, in, in the previous slide. So in, in, in this one, you see some particle flying away and there's a sum, summary, summarize of, 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 of what is going on here. You see mail pool, you have the laser being interact with this. Late, uh, vapor jet uh, domain, which is uh, ejected a particle from, from this domain. So you can actually uh, divide it, uh, physics associated with each uh, phenomenon happen in this process. But in order to summarize all this, I have put in a comment to say that, okay, then once the laser interact with the material, you can trigger uh, particle dynamics, which is very important when, when you have particle flying away. But more interestingly, we, we want to look at the thermal free dynamics or the printing where the laser interact with the material, what is going on, because it is very important to, to control this thing. In order to get the right uh, solid state uh, as transformation, solidification, and subsequent the, 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 the a defect which is formed, which is actually induced during this, this process. How can we actually understand this few hundred micrometer in order to actually control the whole process? That is uh, the, the challenge by understanding the material and the process together. So some, this is something we call AM by design. So we, we look at composition and the process together in order to control uh, these two together. So traditionally, when one, we want to decide something, we start from what we want, want to get out in terms of the property. But, but for AM, we rather need to understand what actually the science or, or the, uh, the, the the processing uh, science that actually govern the, the property or the microstructure which emerge from, from this kind of process. That, that is quite actually a challenge because um, the cooling rate, as I said, the, 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 the thermal signature in this process is a rapid and repeat uh, cycle. Uh, and that, that, that makes the, the microstructure very unstable or non-equilibrium uh, state. If, if you like, and this, this one has to be understood in order for us to decide further uh, the, the new component or the new property that you want in order to match with at least traditional made uh, manufacturing process. So the way I'm going, we, we have been doing in the past years is actually using integrated computational material engineering approach in order to answer what is the uh, manufacturability uh, from this process once we understand the interaction of the laser and heat source. And what is importantly, key process variable that control everything. So from the particle dynamics in the uh, hands of micro lane scale to the uh, thermal free dynamics in the male pool physics, how it's actually print, uh, what, what is a certification sequence that we want to know as well from the certification model and hierarchical microstructure uh, simulation. Uh, pre precipitation kinetic simulation, for example, to understand the scatter in, 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 the, in the process. It's not just everything deterministic now. We, we have to control the noise from, 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 from printing process. And then we hope that, I mean, after we understand this micro scale information, we will bring it up, uh, link it up to the macro scale uh, behavior 
using crystal plasticity or F, uh, finite element type of approach. Moreover, we, 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 we really want to actually go further to actually complete the, the, the loop of the reduced order model where you, you actually take the information or knowledge from the lower length scale information to scale up in, in the higher or my, macro length scale analysis where you, you can actually retain the, the property or, or, or the defects formation in the lower length scale to that big scale uh, uh, analysis. That is something we, 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 we end recent. So um, having said that, I, I want to start to the real uh, context of the, uh, of the talk today. So talking about chemi chemistry process design for AM. So if, 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 if you know um, the, how to say a uh, high performance alloy is actually uh, is a, a constitution by the uh, transition metal in, in the periodic table, if, if you looking at this and then the way forward when you want to fabricate multi-materials uh, additive manufacturing is to mix them together like this, like uh, the technical institute alloy, right? You mix this, this to powder together. This is one way forward that we can we can do in order to do the compositional grade uh, printing, as, as I said before. Or moreover, we can actually improve some property uh, using the this technique for the current uh, additive manufacturing uh, uh, application. For example, in the uh, biomedical application, when you have a binary system, nickel titanium system, where the nickel actually lost a lot compared with titanium, and then you have to understand how this happened and how can we compensate the, the percentage that lost by the process uh, condition. So that this is the ultimate goal of working on this. But we want to generalize this into the whole 3D, 4D, 5D transition metal and then select some, sorry, select some, some material which is uh, available in the aerospace, automotive and biomedical area. So having said that, we, we, we want to extract some uh, chemistry process characteristic actually using the thermochemical fluid flow uh, framework that we uh, propose in this uh, actor material uh, paper. And just just don't want to, to go much into the detail of the equation. If you're interested in, could you please, yeah, yeah, go go to review some some of the equation there. But more interestingly, we see some some trend in in this uh, transition metal. If you look at the kinematic viscosity versus thermal diffusivity, one of them actually a thermal diffusivity definitely measure how heat actually spread or onto the onto your bed if, if you use a powder-based fusion process, for example. And kinetic viscosity measure how fluid flow is actually generated. And then if you see that the, there is some, some trend in this uh, property when you're looking at the liquid density of, of, of this uh, transition metal. And then you see that there is a, like a manganese or uh, actually has higher or likely to flow in a wider region or I mean more viscosity than gold, for example, is which is very heavy uh, metals, but actually gold has larger thermal diffusivity, which is mean that the heat actually spread faster by conduction. That you may see easier when we actually put this one into the simulation where we're looking at the island titanium, nickel, tungsten, aluminum, and gold. You, you will see that the characteristic uh, from, I mean, uh, to represent the additive manufacturing process has been uh, captured using a uh, chemistry process relationship here. And then you will see that go, as, as I said, spread faster by conduction. But again, the fluid flow, which is actually uh, less, uh, actually less viscous than, than, than manganese or nickel, for example, that generate a uh, keyhole uh, compare with some some other material like titanium where porosity already uh, only take place, for example. I mean, all this thing has been summarized in, into a diagram we call the elemental AM diagram to understand the uh, characteristic, especially the vaporization of mass loss. So it seemed that the heavier elements show larger mass loss in the group uh, 3D, 4D, 5D, the mass loss normalized by the atomic weight 
is similar length, but sensitive to the Raynaud number of the male pool. The Raynaud number definitely, as, as you know, defined here on the left-hand side, the maximum uh, liquid velocity, the male pool length scale, is uh, given to be a characteristic length uh, for, for the Raynaud number calculation here. And then we, we can see that uh, chemistry dependent on the process chemistry dependent actually. And then we can extract some, some trend of the mass law. For example, heavier, el heavier element, larger mass law. So for example, the trend is actually has a relationship with the, the flow, which we can't use uh, traditional FD stimulation to, to, to extract it if we're not considering uh, a fluid flow, for example. So, and the trend in the uh, diffusivity is not very much uh, uh, Clear, and that that's why I mean why the there's something called platelet number here, and this one I would have I have to know that this is at the representative uh, condition that we use to to apply for the whole range of the material, which is as we 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 all know that it has to be optimized for a particular material system, but this kind of study give us some guidance how can we actually uh, fine tuning some 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 material system to get better processability is a, a first way uh, uh, to, to, to do that. So once we understand the uh, elemental behavior, we want to mix them together now. The challenge is actually uh, is, is quite high because we, we have a lot of things we, we, we don't know, for example, interaction to interfacial energy, but we, we want to use the, some kind of a traditional um, rule of mixture type of uh, assumption to, to go further to, to get to the in-situ alloying of these two materials. For example, in this system, we have nickel titanium alloy where you can quantify the weight per mass or lo mass loss uh, from a pit, uh, as a function of a process parameter. And, and this one, we, we can quantify the, the weight per uh, how to say, uh, mass as well. And this is actually very, important step for us to to understand how things mix together that's that's why in the, the, the title called species mixing so this is a concept and then once we do is implement this is a multi-layer part of a simulation you will see that now we don't have only a single material we have uh, nickel 50 percent titanium 50 percent spread onto the bed and then we we can actually see how things mix together and it, I mean, if, if you choose the, the wrong parameter, you will see very clearly that the mixing is not very good. And that, that is why uh, defects actually uh, emerge or form. And then you, you see after second deposition, it's also at this uh, process condition. It seemed to be that I mean, the, the, the mixing is, is, is quite good. But the question after this is that, how can we actually use this information further to the a microstructure uh, development and the property uh, prediction as well. So, give you some example that 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 at, at the moment we use in the in situ alloying or mix them together under the beam actually for a new uh, metal uh, metal glass composite for better implant. As you know, uh, traditionally and. We, we all, all use now is a titanium 64 a medical grade is used for a uh, biomedical uh, uh, devices and, and we we have a project under the uh, support of Royal Academy of Engineering to explore another territory in terms of the process material process system where we can actually improve this better so we, we are looking at a partnership with with Thailand look at titanium copper zirconium a system where can we, we want to to, to get the processing and the, the chemistry right to get to achieve the perfect implant uh, at the end of the day. So just give you, you a bit of flavor what, what actually we can do. So we have to meticulously con, uh, do uh, control chemistry and process. And this one, we have to representative uh, process uh, condition at, that you will see from the chemistry map uh, as a result of the, this high fertility model that uh, there, there's some different if you vary the, the process condition 
And this one can be quantified and predicted if we, we use this, this model. And also not, not worry that we can link further to the uh, solid state uh, transformation. If, if, we, if we get this right, that your thermal signature will be right. And not only that, the, the trend after this is actually chemical signature. We need to get it right as well for additive manufacturing. And there is another uh, process that I mentioned earlier, which is not part of it now, is this dielectric metal deposition, where you want to deposit uh, different uh, material or on, or on each other. For example, this one is kind of alternate uh, titanium and a refractory metal uh, deposition where you have titanium niobium, for example, or, or, or titanium molybdenum here. And our study, here is to understand how the, the species actually mix together and what, what is the barrier when you want to actually use this dielectric energy deposition to repair some uh, component. Why it doesn't work from thermal uh, chemical fluid uh, point of view, we, we can have some explanation on that. That's because of, for example, we are looking at the same map viscosity versus diffusivity, but we now focus on the refractory metal. We, we can see from the next slide that there's some trend that uh, some uh, heavy liquid density doesn't mix very well at this process condition. You will see tungsten make it nearly a laminated uh, structure compared with a titanium niobium or titanium zirconium. And this is why some of the application using uh, tungsten additives doesn't mix well well. But anyway, we, we, we can use this kind of simulation to explore even further. How can we improve this uh, mixing? So I am now going to the next part of, of the talk when you actually, when you have a, a, a mixing or, or thermal fluid a characteristic you want to link this one to the grain structure uh, prediction. So, uh, I mean, simplistically, the thing you will do first is to take the thermal uh, field from the, uh, from the simulation at the lower length scale, and then you, you actually scale this up to, to the, the, the domain investigated. And this will follow, the grain will grow, follow the uh, solidification from a thermal gradient, for example. But uh, in reality, we, I mean, this kind of simulation can be uh, kind of statistical uh, mechanics based uh, simulation like uh, uh, Monte Carlo or, 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 yeah, Monte Carlo type simulation. Whereas if you want to impose more uh, physical phenomenon into it, we may need to use a kind of uh, modified phase view or, or, or kind of stellar to other part. Uh, approach that we will mention a bit uh, later now. So in order to actually understand the role again, not just a thermal chemical fluid, but also link this one to the solute field, which actually happened in, in the solid state uh, 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 of, of the material. We actually now investigated, uh, investigating the, uh, the role of the interaction of, of, the, uh, of, of the laser and the powder as a, function, as a function of the chemistry. And then we can uh, elucidate some phenomenon like solute uh, trapping or rapid certification that leads to non-equilibrium microstructure, which we, we uh, th this work is, is quite important because in order to understand how material solidify, it's important for microstructure and property uh, scatter in the process. And for example, if we use an in-situ alloying, how can we understand what is this a certification uh, pathway for, for, for that uh, system. And that, that's what we are developing a mathematical framework uh, to do that. Having said that, uh, our things uh, going to, to do next is actually with regards to the uh, precipitation uh, model. I mean, as, as you know, there's some concern that the, 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 the phase which is actually present in, into the printing is not as anticipated because you once you you want to fabricate nickel based super alloy high volume fraction and nickel based high volume fraction gamma prime nickel based super alloy but 
you you hardly see the the gamma prime at, at the as fabricated state. That is because of a uh, non equilibrium nature. And once you you do some post treatment, this will start coming up. And then how can we understand and then maximize the use of the model in order to give some direction for the the, the post treatment? Uh, this 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 work I mean I mean put I mean put a chat and light on, onto that. So we take a thermal history from the lower length scale information to predict the precipitation kinetics, and then we will see that there is some in as fabricated condition. So the 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 precipitation uh, how to say wavelength can be observed here. So there is uh, some large uh, gamma prime, for example, in this in this material is in Cornell 718. If you want, you can follow our paper back in 2018. This is four or five years ago now. So we can we can actually understand why uh, and how the, the, the build here is actually distorted and why the visual stress are developed it. Once we actually link this kind of result to the um, mechanical analysis. So the ultimate goal, as I said, is to for example, if we use uh, as as nickel-based superalloy as as a, a model, uh, we we can we can say that we want a property of high strength, high ductility uh, material like uh, CM two four seven. That that is a community want to match the property or, or the behavior to to be like that. But the 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 the, the problem is that doesn't actually work very well. In, in, in the uh, current uh, uh, printing condition. How can we improve that? I mean, we, we, we use actually computer simulation to understand as well from the printing until the post treatment in order to, I mean, justify or rationalize that, why it doesn't work and then how can we improve it? That is the next step we are working on. So in, in the, the paper back in 2011, uh, 2021, I, I have we have published uh, in additive manufacturing to say about the uh, manufacturability of super alloy. I mean, we we, we took a uh, 100 super alloy uh, composition and also uh, estimate or calculate the property of that, and then benchmark with the uh, Inconel 718, which is the very well known alloy with hash uh, a, a lot of fluid uh, property measured. So we we benchmark on that, and then we generate. That kind of is called thermal fluid uh, map to 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 say something about manufacturability uh, using porosity cooling rate in the liquid state. I mean, as 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 is shown here, from the liquid to solid, and then because there is some different uh, cooling rate, as you may notice in in your measurement, if you do some uh, in situ uh, thermal imaging, thermal uh, monitoring, you, you will see that this this actually happen and. And more importantly, from the kind of high fidelity model, we can generate some something called a mass lot map as well for super alloy. And then you you will see from from this, uh, I mean, nearly about uh, 30, 35 uh, calculation here and map in in a in a contour that the new newly developed uh, composition uh, for additive manufacturing actually sit in in the good printability region. Where you have less uh, porosity, less mass loss, and also uh, cooling rate is not very extreme compared with uh, some high uh, gamma prime former super alloy. Uh, uh, yeah. And this is because if, if we understand this interaction and then we summarize map for, for super alloy here, you will see that there's some hotspot from the thermal fluid point of view. That you you can you can get some kind of processing window that you a lot of mass loss or, or get a quite optimum cooling rate. And I have to note that this is at a, a condition investigated. So we we need to use this information to actually optimize further for a particular uh, material and process, also machine as well for additive manufacturing. And last but not least is actually how can we actually make use of all the uh, lower length scale information to the uh, larger length scale analysis. So if, if we are looking at some material system like Thai 64 or in Canal 625 here, and a normal thermal simulation available now, 
hasn't been uh, taking into account much the lower length scale information. But now we, we want to actually develop something called reduce all the model that take information from the lower length scale into account in order to get the thermal signature right and as well later chemical signature right as well. So like this, this one give you some example like uh, Thai 6 for with and without evaporation. You will see that the male pool actually uh, predicted is actually larger difference. And once you're building up in, in, in height as well, you, you won't be able to get a steady state male pool by the way. And this is why we, we want to develop this kind of model, but, but it's still not very cheap uh, uh, computationally anyway, but it's actually cheaper than this high fidelity model can give you some kind of predictive capability for, for, for uh, further uh, upscaling or further digital twin type of model. So this, this, this can quantify that model capture some, some physics of prediction that, that you may anticipate it from, from, from experiment. And this one, I mean, we explore as well the, the, the territory of the multi-track, multi-layer deposition, where we actually have a fabricate, at, I mean, in this slide, five layer. And we, then you will see that the map will actually develop uh, further, further, and further. There's no steady state mail pool anymore in this process if you not actually choose this right uh, window to, to do so. I mean, that's why if you understand this, this kind of physics or, or underlying um, mechanism, we can actually optimize the, the process better for uh, a while, um, I mean, currently available uh, material like Intel Senra A625316 and aluminum alloy. Yeah. So having said that, our vision is actually to develop a toward a digital twin for this uh, for hybrid manufacturing to link up the micro scale information defects in a, to the macro scale analysis using this reduced order monitoring approach. And then we we hope that this comprehensive uh, data from from the uh, lower length scale information can can be further developed using uh, for machine learning based uh, model for digital twin of different or uh, multi multiple material uh, manufacturing and this one is a work in progress to include all, all the defects formation as well in in the process that that is some something we, we want to do and having said that i want to summarize the the talk uh, today uh the uh computational fluid dynamics uh, or cfd can be used to study liquid uh, metal behavior, I, particularly in a printing uh, condition for additive manufacturing. And this understanding of this solid liquid vapor transition is a key to capture thermal and chemical uh, signature, defect formation, resulting microstructure, and scatter in the, 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 the property. Prediction of this mi mi microstructure variation induced by this localized liquid solid reaction can facilitate a process design for further develop uh, for a particular material and process system. And better understanding this scatter, as I said, a lot of things in active is, is stochastic. It's actually everything, yeah. So we, we have, how can we understand this actually noise or, 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 or statistic of, of the process and use for material design purpose, especially for a new material for additive manufacturing. And then we, we hope that this uh, fundamental understanding can be used as a knowledge for the AI-based model to simulate physical effects in, in AM by linking this material process information, establishing a uh, digital material design for next generation metal additive manufacturing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chenpat, uh, for a wonderful talk. And uh, um, any questions from audience? Thank you very much for the, for the talk. Um, very, very interesting. Can I just, um, you have to excuse me if I if I missed uh, what you were saying earlier, but um, did I understand correctly that you were saying that in terms of um, elemental losses, that the elemental sure. losses are linked into the atomic number of the material or the, the elements that you're trying to alloy when you're doing the in situ alloying? Yeah, I mean, elemental loss are characteristic. We extract from the elemental processing 
So it's just individual element by using a single or identical process condition to, to extract that. And there is some trend we need to explore further, actually, whether this is this, because this is all computational experiment. There is no uh, real measurement, but we, we have put some kind of effort to, to look at the, to, to, to go further to the chemical imaging, because we, we all know that in Thai 6 4 there's some, some loss of, of some particular element for sure, and there's some condensation that that is quite challenged from the modeling part of view as well to, to simulate that. And then I think this is kind of first attempt, how can we go about this uh, elemental loss to quantify it, to uh, simulate it, and that, that in a systematic way. And that is that some subsequent work that, that we are working with some other people, which, which may coming out hopefully later this year or uh, early next year. So we, we can, yeah, definitely. It's, it's linked to that, but we, we we are confirming that. Yeah. So okay, so so you've sort of got some um, evidence from the comp computational modeling that um, sure. indicates there should be a link with atomic numbers. Yes. I was just wondering because because all I know about is steels. I was wondering if this kind of um, approach would translate into steels, where we probably have well, it's more. Complicated in terms of the number of alloying elements that are present. Mm, yeah. Um, perhaps slightly greater range of atomic number, but you know, I guess in principle the physics should be the same. So I was just wondering yeah. if you could comment whether you think your uh, the indications would translate into steels, um, and also if you could just explain to me why there is that um, link between uh, the atomic number to the losses that you're seeing. Yeah. Um... Just to be honest with you, I haven't had any project working on, on steel uh, for a, in particular. But I mean, uh, most of my, my work is on nickel or titanium or, or some uh, other uh, uh, metal glass kind of system. But if I, I mean, definitely I, I need to, 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 to run some <laughs> stimulation first to, to say about, about the steel in terms of mass or characteristic. But the thing I can say from from from, from the, the work that, that we have been doing, we there, there is some trend actually for 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 steel and then the alloying element that that have some correct have some potential that is is maybe some some loss. But 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 as as I said, this one is just a a, a basis of fundamental. Uh, I mean, it's a component for 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 that elemental loss. We have to investigate in a particular material system that. You are interested in so and, and this one you you are talking about alloy uh, powder right it's not in situ powder so it is some something that was a, a little bit challenging as well from computational point of view but anyway uh, we, we prefer in situ alloy but 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 I, I'm, I'm sure that if we understand better the, the material that, that you are talking about I, I can comment more on that yeah okay all right, thank you very just, much. Just don't have chance to 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 look at <laughs> the steel because this one, as, as you see, I'm not just a simulation guy. I try to link simulation and metallurgy. So this is a bit challenge. And then this, that's that's why is is have to yeah. I can't comment much if I don't study that well. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so no, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think a couple of questions. First, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Prakash. Um, I hope you can see me now. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for the, the very impressive talk. Um, I, I guess my question relates a little bit on the loss part of it, um, but more sure. generally speaking, um, you, you are um, observing a lot of effects that are more or less random, like um, droplet formation, um, the, the the bridge shape in in the liquid melt pool. I'm just wondering how you're trying to capture this. Is this something where you relate to statistical data from experiments, or are you actually trying with Monte Carlo methods from from physics based simulations in order to to tackle that kind of randomness? Yeah, this is very good question. I mean, I I would like. Uh, to answer in this way, I mean, two parts. The first part is actually, we, we actually curious about what, what happened in, in the physics of, of this uh, non-equilibrium state. 
And then we, we have some collaboration actually with experimental people, let's say from UCL Imperial to investigate more. I mean, they're they in, so interested in male pool. <laughs> so that, that is perfect fit. How can we actually rationalize something actually happen in, in that, in, in the process so as a function of materials or composition? That is one question. The second question, a uh, second part of this answer is that how can we link this one to the statistical based uh, approach to, to do that? This is some, <laughs> to be honest, this can be a proposal big project because I mean, that, that's what we are trying to do as well. Um, I, I, I understand that we, we have so many experimental uh, data, but it's not uh, actually correct in a more, in, in, in such a way that we can use for a big data analysis. So that, that's why our idea is to basically, we, we can't do thousands of conditions, right? The maximum we can do tens of conditions, but we have to use this simulation to guys or what is the window for that? And then we, we, we can prove a, in a particular condition. That is exactly the same that we, we, we've been doing at the moment for some in-situ alloy system. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's some confirmation that the loss is actually there. It's, it's real phenomenon. The mixing is actually very, very real. I can say uh, from PMA result that we have investigated in some, because I, it hasn't been published yet, so I can't say much. I mean, that, that, that is so real. And then there's some laws, uh, especially some paper that we published in NITI. Is the loss can be up to two atomic percent in nitinol material, which actually make the, the transformation temperature shift significantly. We, we, ha we can't bear with that. We need to compensate somehow. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that is the implementation of, of the code. How and how can we use this information or the statistical approach to, to actually further develop this? I think, to be honest, has to work with <laughs> uh, people now. So because, I mean, we, we can't solve everything. I, mean, I have to be honest with you. And then that, that's why we, we are now trying to, if, if this is something you are looking at, so we, we can discuss yeah. further. Yeah, thank you very um, much. <laughs> I, I wanted to, to mention that actually, if you're really interested sure. in this, we are actually working on this in a different aspect. We are identifying the most sensitive parameters based on, on random um, events on, yeah. on failure. Yeah. Um, but but the yeah. theories are are applicable, hence hence my question. Yeah. So yes, if you want, right. I can send you a separate email on, on this. Yes, please. Yes, please. If mm -hmm. you have my email address, I can drop in the chat box if you want. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. So, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Carl? Hi, um, I'll just be on the other screen. Hi. Thank you for that, that that nice talk. Really enjoyed it. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> a, a lot of the alloys that the additive manufacturing industry has been working on are yes. are alloys that have existed for 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 a, a while and now have been produced yeah. by conventional yeah. production routes. So you got three one six and tie six four. And I think. I, I guess my question is: Is how far away do you think we are for designing alloys? For you know, a lot, a lot of these alloys have got additions in there to make it easier to cast or easier to roll, or easier to forge for the nickel alloys. We and and we're we're directly turning those alloys into powders, where they don't need to be forged or don't need to be. You know, the casting is different. How close can you, or how much do techniques like this, helping design for AM rather than just using current alloys and how easy would it be to get those into the market i know you mentioned that automotive is one of the um applications and they very much stick to standards they love standards for everything um and so how how easy is oh yeah and how easy is yeah, it do you think you'll be how easy I'm, do you think um i mean let, let me try to uh, uh repeat your 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 answer uh your your question it's actually you're asking how can we use that traditional uh, a legacy or existing alloy to to or for additive successfully, right? Well, not, that, quite that, that... not not quite. Is it possible to throw out the rules of current alloy? You know, if we want to make a three one six type material, okay. Some some of those some of those additions are made to make it easier to cast and process. Of course, of course, yeah. So, 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 so yeah, can we do, can we can we throw the rule book out? And we and live start... with existing alloy. 
Yeah, that's okay. what you're saying. Yeah, and, and 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 what are the barriers of getting those to the market? Is there going to be a standards for AM um, alloys? Because well, they're um, going to be this, different. This is very <laughs> extremely good question, actually. So I mean, I mean, uh, behind the, um, I just say that the way um, behind the 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 the, the idea of this presentation, we we believe that AM will will, will change how we make things. That's his first thing, as, as you said, from in situ or law or whatever. But as as you as you mentioned, or as I mean, as uh, industrial people may, may want, is actually how can we leave it the existing alloy? <laughs> and the, the 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 thing is that we we I if if you ask me, I would say that we need to understand the fundamental characteristic, like like what what we are doing in order to actually adjust. The, or the composition, because I believe that the, the chemistry and process is actually linked to each other. Normally, traditionally, you are living with some simple uh, thermal cycle, like casting, heating up, hold it, cool it down, forging is pretty much the same. And when when you go to the very severe situation like additive, not not I mean not even welding, because welding you have only one cycle, but this one is actually caused some some challenge which. Make, we, we don't know yet. So, so, so that's why uh, if you have some loss, for example, if you know there's some loss in, in this manufacturing process, and then we, we try to actually get away with it, uh, uh, compensate some composition, the traditional or existing alloy may work. But, but I mean, given that we don't have much, I, I, I may be wrong, uh, I mean, uh, a computational study to 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 because to to understand or rationalize what happened in in the real manufacturing condition, which which actually I have to accept to you as well. So all of my <laughs> publication is driven by curiosity. So we need to link with industry to 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 actually I mean maximize the use of the model, and that is one way. Even I get some some support initially from Rose I mean, back in twenty eighteen on on this uh, fellowship. Um, yeah. That, that's that is my my answer. I I think if we understand fully, we, we can say that okay, we 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 can't live with it, or we can we can live with it what by adjusting some some composition, which considering with considering of process uh processing route as well, and that 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 that, that is some some something not not just just for my uh personal thought, not just only thermodynamic calculation in in my opinion. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any other questions? If not, Chinapath, the as far as I know, like in 3D printing, most of the metallic alloys, uh, the structure, microstructure is the problem, right? Like columnar yeah. grain structure. And yeah. uh, they're trying to uh, make it like more equi-axed structure uh, after yes. 3D printing. So any anything in those uh, kind of like your suggestions, like what are the aspects going in that uh, uh, mm. uh, microstructural development to um, yes. transform columnar to equiaxed? Yes, that is very, very, very good question, uh, actually. So, I mean, this is actually the, the trend at the moment for, for modeling people to do as well, try to, to go to the, 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 the microstructure development, considering all complication in, in, in the process. And uh, the, the uh, first attempt that people working on, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about simulation community, is actually use a statistical approach where you, you're not taking much uh, physics in, into account. So, I mean, the, the new way of doing that now is, is to link all, all the physics, or what, what is will make complicated thing. But in order to extract some characteristic, like uh, the, the grain growth characteristic, uh, as I said, everything has to scale up. We can't we can't run a simulation of of 100 micron. Oh, sorry, 100 millimeter even. As, I mean, in in this this thing. So at, at the moment, people are trying to 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 do that. I mean, I then buy some 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 paper from from N N U S for example, from 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 U S A. Yeah, and then we are trying to, yeah, and I give a bit of flavor what, what we are doing to understand the certification pathway. 
no. before we actually say about whether it or or a corona. That is a bit larger grain scale, if you want. And then once we that we we develop that fundamental understanding, we will I mean confidently links up to the the bigger uh, grain model that that can can tell you about that. I mean, if if you are fabricating some biomedical devices that that width of hundred micron, this is so matter <laughs> the 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 microstructure. But if you are talking about automotive part, I, I'm I'm sure it's uh, it's definitely bigger. So it, yeah, it. It is is as I mean the, the the point I want to make that is about the application as well. You are you are you are talking. If if you are talking about some application of the cross section few millimeter, so this this kind of high validity model will will be very useful. And uh, yeah, and 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 for let's say for steel or heavy industry uh, part of application, I, I I need to to understand more. I mean I mean, I, I know you are working on on steel. Right. And then, yeah. So thank you very much for your question. OK, thank you. Um, any further questions from audience? OK, uh, if no more questions, I once again uh, uh, thank you, Chenapath, uh, from our group uh, for this wonderful talk. OK, and uh, yeah, I wish you all a very good afternoon and thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thanks thank for invitation as well. Thank, Thank you. you.